Well, good morning, Bardstown and Nelson County. Welcome to Bradford and Brooks. Jim Brooks and Margie Bradford with you this morning um, until the top of the noon hour. And then uh, stay tuned to WBRT for the best in local news headlines and obituaries. Uh, well, Margie, we have a beautiful, sunny Wednesday morning outside. It's gorgeous. Do you, now I want to know, do you think spring has finally sprung, or are we going to have some more 30-degree weather? Well, you know, this is the Ohio Valley. Well, yeah. And, I know and all that. bets are off. Yeah, you know. my head can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing I appreciated was we didn't have snow on Easter. That's you? true. We didn't, I um, mean, yeah. Them, uh, one of our blessings. Right. But you know, they say April showers bring May flowers. Oh, well, so, 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 so they do if the frost and the deer don't get them. <laughs> uh, which mine have already, the deer already invaded my yard. No, that's right. You have a, you have a popular uh, yard with the live. Oh, the, I do. The and they, and, and they're bold as brass. They even came into, they come into, up into the front yard, not just the oh, big wow. backyard. So uh, my daughter came in last night and she said, did you know that there are three deer grazing in your front yard? <laughs> and, and her husband said, oh, they look so cute. And I, <laughs> I did not have nice words. <laughs> well, they help keep the grass short. You know, you know yeah, that. and the flower's gone. Oh, oh well, that's a, yeah, that's a difference. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they love the hostas <clears> and the... Uh, any anything else they can get their little teeth into <laughs> well uh, margie as you know we're continuing our uh, series of discussions with candidates on the ballot for the may 17th uh, primary uh, there's a and, a and admittedly a lot of those are republican candidates uh, i think there's only two democrats there's only one primary for the Dem democratic right Party. yes there there is and um so uh well margie let's go ahead and get started uh, uh, we're we're going to be joined by telephone by a candidate running in the 5th district, which is the Northeast Nelson, Bloomfield mm -hmm. area. Um, let's get our uh, headphones on here. <coughs> Anne, Mar Anne Marie Williams. All right, let's get her, All let's right. get her punched up here. All right, good, good morning. You're with WBRT. Whoop, wait a minute. It's not gone. All right. Good morning. You're uh, on the air with with uh, Jim and uh, Margie. Yes. How are you all this morning? Uh, good morning, Anne Marie. Good morning. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, are you hearing us okay? Yes. Are you hearing me okay? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Perfect. Well, uh, Anne Marie, I know you're a candidate for a magistrate in the uh, uh, fifth district, and um, you'll be on the May primary ballot. Um, tell our uh, listen, WBRT listening audience a little bit about about who you are and uh, uh, why you decided to get in the race. Okay, all right. Well, first of all, thank you both for having me today and giving me an opportunity to share a little bit about myself um, and working it out for me to call in this morning. I'm at work, so I'm taking my <laughs> lunch hour to talk with you. Um, but I live on uh, the family farm in Bloomfield with my husband, who I've been married to for 31 years in June. That's David Williams. Mm -hmm. And I have four children that live there on the farm with us. Uh, we've lived there for about eight years. We moved to Nelson County from Western Kentucky when my husband became the new agency manager at Kentucky Farm Bureau, the central office there in Bardstown. Um, I have four children, like I said. My oldest is Martin. He's a graduate of Nelson County High School and a graduate of University of Kentucky. He currently works in Frankfurt for the Kentucky Department of Agriculture under Commissioner Ryan Quarles. Uh, Larkin is my second son. He also is a graduate of Nelson County High School, and he'll be graduating on May 6th. Can't wait for that <laughs> from, the, from the University of Kentucky, and he will be graduating with a marketing degree. Then I have a son that's very popular around Bardstown. His name is Benjamin, and he is a senior at Thomas Nelson High School, and he is the owner of the Ben Jammin ice cream truck yeah. that moves around town. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, yeah. everybody seems to know me by Ben Jammin's mom. So, uh, <laughs> He, he will be graduating, of course, in May from Thomas Nelson, and he is planning on attending the University of Kentucky in the fall, and he's going to major in agriculture economics. And then, last but not least, I finally got a girl, and I, 
My daughter is Scarlett Ann, and she is an eighth grader at Bloomfield Middle School this year, and she runs cross country and track for Nelson County High School, and she also plays volleyball at Bloomfield Middle School. Um, Just a little bit about me, Um, I've been an educator for 25 years. Um, I served as a teacher, I've been an instructional coach, I've been a principal, I was the director of elementary education and preschool for Nelson County, and I'm currently serving as a reading interventionist in Anderson County. So I'm very passionate about education. Um, I graduated from the Western Kentucky University with my rank one in education administration, and I also have my superintendent certificate. As far as memberships and clubs and things around the community, um, I'm part of the Women's Committee for the Nelson County Republican Party. I'm also an FFA alumni. Um, I'm part of the Kentucky Farm Bureau Women's Committee. And I'm also a Sunday school teacher at Bloomfield Baptist Church. Uh, And and what do you do in your spare time? (laughs) Well, I don't have a lot of spare time. Uh, my four children keep me hopping. But you, might see, you might see me on the ice cream truck. I've been known to drive the ice cream truck to help out there. But my hobbies would probably be I love to deer hunt, believe it or not. And I'm a pretty good shot. And I love to go horseback riding. We have Tennessee walking horses on our farm. So I love to go trail riding. Oh, that's that. That's uh, that's that's really uh, neat, Amory. And I, uh, I want to thank you for your service to uh, many communities uh, through uh, as an educator because I, I know that uh, I know just you know as a reporter I just I know I could always tell that you have a uh, uh, that passion you have for education was always very uh, uh, very palpable when you were uh, when you were speaking yes I've, that probably comes out in everything that i ever say or do because you know i feel like sometimes we have a calling to do the things that we do mm-hmm. in life and mine has been education by far i don't i don't feel i've missed my calling because my my passion has always been there to help the children um because i just feel like education is the basis of everything we do you know mm-hmm. when i've been working with young teachers i tell them that you know you're Uh, what starts everything, whether you're a plumber, a lawyer, a doctor, a carpenter, no matter what you do in life, it first starts with a teacher. So it's one of the most important roles that we can ever be. Yeah, well, Jim and I both are are predisposed to uh, anything having to do with education. Well, that's great. Uh, Anne-Marie, there are going to be a lot of challenges for you if you... uh, get on fiscal court. What do you see are the top three challenges that Nelson County are going to have to deal with for, say, the next 20 years? Well, um, I know Jim had just asked me, you know, what's the main reason why I'm running or why I threw my hat in the race. Um, I have always been involved with politics, but I never felt like, um, as a mother, I could take that time to um, actually step out and do that and devote the time that needs to be devoted until my children have reached the age where they're sort of self-sufficient. So really the reason I'm running is because I feel like the 5th District, um, our voice needs to be heard. Um, You know, as a magistrate, your job is to hear the concerns of your constituents and make them known to the court and then work hard to solve Mm -hmm. the issues. And there are going to be several issues, but I feel like sometimes our district sometimes gets overlooked or they get the short end of the stick, you might say. So we have a lot of needs in our district. You know, as I've been talking with people, we have (coughs) needs for water, internet, um, we have road needs. There's just lots of infrastructure needs um, that we have. And then I hear a lot of concerns that we pay all these taxes, but we're not necessarily seeing it directly affect us in the 5th district. So my main issues that I want to make sure is that District 5 has equitable services compared to all the other districts. And, you know, whether that be water, whether that be internet, whether that be sewer lines, uh, whether that be road repair, whatever that issue is, um, you know, because we have a variety of different ones in our area, I just want to make sure that our tax dollars is actually being used to benefit us. Okay. Uh, well, Anne-Marie, the, um, 
uh, you know, one of the things that stymies the development of additional uh, developments for, for uh, single family homes, and it, there is a, a shortage of, uh, of housing in our community, uh, but, uh -huh. but what really kind of holds that back is uh, um, the lack of, uh, of uh, sewers out in the county. And uh, there's developable land around the county, but uh, in order to have a high density development, uh, you know, the developers need to have sewers, uh, but they're just in that infrastructure just isn't there. Um, do you think the county government has a role in, in doing something to, uh, uh, you know, having a role in, in uh, kind of advancing that cause uh, to uh, allow for, to, to kind of Grease the uh, grease the wheels for uh, uh, development to take place. Yes, I do. Um, we hold, I guess, a special role. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I really feel like we need to do a better job of is we need to get people to come to Nelson County and want to be here. You know, and there's a lot of things that go into that. Not only the housing, but the type of school system you have in your county. Of course, your tax rate sometimes. Do we have employment for those people? So, you know, I think that the court is going to play an important role in all of that. And we need to be offering opportunities to support that. Now, as far as the housing specifically, I know we play a role in those sewer lines. Should we give money toward expanding those sewer lines? Yes, in the sense, but if it causes the tax dollar to go up or more tax dollars to have to be paid in, then I'm not sure... That is what we need to do. We need to look at different ways, maybe incentives for the builders or the developers that's developing those subdivisions to expand those sewer lines. I don't think that we should um, have to fund the whole project. Right. I think that there's things that we can offer uh, to be an incentive for them to come here or to want to expand those sewer lines, but it should not come down on the taxpayer to right. offset that. And right, that, and, right, and and I know what you're saying because there are ways that county government can assist without uh, adding a burden to the taxpayer. Yes, and I'm, I'm just going to use my education background here just a little bit to, you know, sort of, I guess, describe what I'm saying there. In education, you're always limited on funding. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a day that goes by that funding changes. You know, you deal with federal funds, you deal with state funds, and you deal with local funds. And the budget is always tight, you know, and you have to be very creative. I know as a principal, you know, there would be years that I would need more teachers in the classroom mm -hmm. or we would need more curriculum. And it wasn't there. You know, we didn't have the federal funds or state funds to do that with. The budget was very tight. So we had to be very creative. And I, I will share with you, I've written several grants. And I've received several grants because I knew there was a need. And so we have to dig down deep to figure out how are we going to meet that need. Because there's a lot of fund sources out there. And sometimes people aren't aware of all the fund sources that are available to us. It takes some digging to really find it. I mean, it's not like a big advertisement that's out there in the Google world, you know, for us to find. You have to dig. And it takes time. I will tell you, grant writing is not one of my favorite pastimes but um, in the 25 years I've been an educator I've probably written and received over a million dollars in grant funds because mm. it's very important when I see there's a need and there's a deficit in what I'm able to accomplish then I'm going to find a fund source for that and I think that's where the county and the court can come into play you know we need to be looking at all opportunities out there you know maybe even talking to neighboring counties as well and say okay what fund sources do you use for this what what's available and like i said usually when there's a project such as this or housing there's some way that we can fund it we've just got to be creative about how we go about doing it <coughs> all right the uh, uh this uh, kind of this whole this leads me to my next question um uh, the industri the Nelson County's industrial park is just about out of property that's available for development, and and I can tell you when the uh, fiscal court made the decision to uh, purchase the property, they also had to invest uh, in building infrastructure for uh, you know in order to to make the lots 
um, sellable to a business and industry. Uh, there was a lot of discussion if uh, it, is the county play a role? Should the county play a role or should that be uh, industrial development uh, be left to uh, you know private uh, private uh, entities? Uh, but I think the court at that time felt that you know the, the local government has a role to play in industrial development. Would you uh, is that something that uh, you would agree with? Yes, um, definitely. Anytime an industry comes into your county, that is going to be a benefit to your county, whether it be in the taxes or giving employment. Like I said, back to getting people to come to Nelson County, you know, we have to offer a lot of things. So should the court play a role in that? Yes. Now, does that mean we fund the expense of all that? No. Um, you know, like I said, I don't believe it should come down on the taxpayer. Right. But I do feel that there's incentives and things that we can do that um, will support industry. And I think it's, you know, to be growing and striving as a county, you know, we can't do the same things that we've been doing and get the same results because our economy is different now. It's going right. to be different five years from now. So we have to constantly be thinking outside of the box of new ways that we can get new revenue in for our county, get more people here involved, and get them employed. Anne Marie, if you were to be elected to the fiscal court, you would uh, probably be the only woman uh, and uh, probably the only educator. I, I can't think of an educator who's been on the on a fiscal court. So what what do you think that 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 uh, that those reasons would be f that you could what 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 unique views could you bring that you think would make a difference on fiscal court? Well, first off, as a woman, as a mother, um, I think sometimes women see things differently than men. We have a different perspective, um, and maybe there's different priorities that we would look at versus a, a man. Um, as an educator, I come from lots of background of working with uh, multiple um, groups of people, multiple communities of people with various backgrounds, many diversities over the years. Um, I've been in schools with a large Hispanic population as well as minority population and I bring to the table that perspective of where we have to look at all people you know we've got to make sure that it's not just right <coughs> for one group of people or one area within our county that we're bringing all the perspectives together at the table and I think sometimes um I don't want to say, uh, you know, we just look at it one way, but sometimes when you only have one um, group of people looking at something, they tend to all see it the same way. Right. And so as a woman, as a mother, and as an educator, that's going to be a different perspective that I can bring to the table. And, you know, I've had 25 years to collaborate with different people and work with different people from um, various backgrounds. And I feel like that's going to be an advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the things that I always said when I was a principal, you know, I was first a teacher. So mm -hmm. when I come to the principal role, I was able to look at it through a teacher's lens. And so as a magistrate, you know, first I was a mother, I was a woman, and I was an educator. So I can look through that lens when it comes to prioritizing what we need to be doing what is our priorities, and then what are some different ways we can fund it? Mm -hmm. Lynn Marie, are yeah. there are there any new initiatives or or things that come to mind that you would like, you know, in, in a wish list you would like to see uh, county government uh, uh, tackle? Uh, uh -huh. You know, for example, uh, maybe even having meetings at night or weekends uh, to allow more people who would want to 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 attend, or or any other initiatives you can think of. Yes, um, a couple of things that just come uh, right off the top of my head is one is a nighttime meeting. Um, I, I know as a working person every day, I leave my home at 6.20 in the morning and I get back to Bloomfield around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I have long days. Sometimes they're extended days. And I know other people work longer hours than that. We have people that work 12-hour shifts around our county. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when something matters to them and they need to bring it to the court with 
the um, daytime meetings, you know, they have to take off work to do that or they have to use one of their personal days to do that. And I really feel like that's unfair. You know, I know that some people work nights or some people work days and there's not a way to please everybody's schedule. But I do feel like that if we could do part of the meetings or maybe half of the meetings or at least offer a meeting one time a month, in the evening or in the afternoon hours where people could attend those meetings and share their concerns. You know, the court, I'm a representative for my district. But, you know, some people may not feel comfortable to just get out and share with their magistrates all the time what their needs are. And so if they can attend the court and share those needs, and sometimes when you hear it firsthand from the constituent, I think it matters more. You know, it makes it real. It makes it personal. And so I would really like to see that. Um, A couple of things that I would love for Nelson County to do is offer more opportunities for our young people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have have four children between the ages of 13 and 22. And there's not a lot going on in Nelson County as far as in their free time that they can do. You know, we're losing our movie theater. We've lost our bowling alley. There's just not a lot to keep them here. You know, I find young people are going to um, Louisville or they're going to E-Town and uh, they're enjoying the things that's there. And Mm -hmm. I want them to be happy and excited about where they live because when they're happy with where they live, then they're going to come back here and to live with their family. Of course, as a mother, I would love to have my children live by me and my grandchildren someday. (laughs) But I know other people would, too. And, and you know, this is a family community. This is a family county. And we need to be investing in our families. You know, there needs to be a future for the kids that are graduating high school to come back here. And so um, I think a lot of that is going to play what do we have to offer. Are we offering on jobs? That's great. But also in their free time, what are we offering? So I, I would like to see some development in that area as well. So uh, it's a, uh, a, a multi-purpose indoor sports facility that's being talked about that you're willing to dedicate uh, resources to help make that happen? Yes, I would be I would be in favor of that. Once again, I'm going to be very honest. I don't feel like it comes down to the taxpayer to fund all of this, but I think there are ways that we can be creative about how we get maybe private entities to come in and invest in our county and make that possible. Yes. Right. I, I, you know, th- this topic has come up in just about every interview Margie and yeah, I have had. It has. And then uh, in last night's debate among the judge executive candidates. And, uh, and that's, that's a common theme that, um, you know, how to do it without it being impacted. All right, without impact on taxpayers, <clears throat> and uh, it's encouraging to me to to see so much discussion about it, and then uh, to know that uh, these these discussions will continue following uh, the May primary and the November election, um, and that there's there's support among candidates, you know, that want to make this happen because uh, it is a big project, and and um, um, as Judge Watts has said uh, in the past. Uh, five, getting the funding to build it is one thing, but the ongoing operation of it, we, that needs to be in the, in the formula, too, because a lot of these uh, facilities lose money, and, and that shouldn't be on the shoulders of the taxpayer, either. Mm-hmm. But, but if they bring... <coughs> But if they bring businesses and people into the community, then it would be an investment. Right. right. I mean, it's like the uh, ambulance services. You don't you don't make a profit on that, but that's a service that is valuable to the people of the community. Right. It is, And, and the way I like to look at it is this: you know, when there's more people living in Nelson County, it's not that we have to raise our tax rate. Uh, to get more money, you know, that's more people here paying their taxes here. Exactly. And so, therefore, that's more revenue for the county. So we need to work on what's going to create those people to want to come here and live and work in Nelson County. Well, Anne-Marie, one of the, uh, one of the important roles the magistrate plays in each district is uh, road maintenance. And the magistrate uh, play, plays a big role in deciding what roads uh, uh, get blacktop money 
uh, because the uh, uh, right now fiscal court divides their the pot of money for road repairs among the magistrates and um, are you first I want to ask you are you uh, is does this current situation seem you know fair and equitable um, and uh, I know that and one of the facts of life is that each year by year the cost of uh, that blacktop goes up which means it covers less and less territory um, is it you have any ideas for uh, uh, you know how would you like to see the uh, road uh, road maintenance money uh, divided up, or uh, do you have any suggestions for that? Yes, road repair is a hot topic in my district. Uh, I need some road repair on the road I actually live on currently, <laughs> but I know that it's not one of the worst roads in the county by any means. Um, this is an area, like I said, there's no way to please everyone all the time. But I do think that we need to prioritize where we're spending our money. You know, our money is not going as far, you know, and um, our workers, I know, are probably strained in getting done what they need to get done at this point. So we have to be very specific in how we look at those roads. I think one of the first things is, you know, we got to make sure that we're maintaining our county roads. You know, and, you know, not all roads out there are, are county roads. You know, some are state roads. So we first need to look at what roads we're supposed to maintain. And then we need to look at the ones that are traveled the most, you know, ones that receive a lot of traffic. Um, of course, they need to get our first priority. Um, it's going to affect the most people in our area. And then we need to make sure that the other roads, they may not be traveled as much, but that they're equitable and maybe on a rotating basis that a certain section would get so much. You know, it seems like I know in eight years I have seen one particular road in my district repaid three times. Hmm. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> I haven't seen my road paved at all. <laughs> and so not that mine is a high traffic area by any means, but I'm sure that there's other areas that have not been paved since those three times have been the paving on the one road that I was speaking of. And so I really think that we need to really look at what we're doing, make sure we're keeping an accurate record of what roads we're touching and what ones we aren't. Um, and I think we need to get out there and look. You know, my job as magistrate is going to be able to get out there, actually look at the roads, make a list of those roads, um, and make sure that, you know, my constituents get their voice heard back at the court. Um, and I think, you know, there's a way we've got to prioritize everything. I, I, I did a study one time on uh, Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of mm -hmm. Highly Affected People. And one of them, it says, you know, you've got to put your big rocks in there first. You've got to put your big <laughs> things in there first. You know, everybody has an issue. Right. But we've got to make sure that we've got our big issues covered first, and then we work on the little details. And like I said, there's a way to do that. You know, I, I will be real honest. I'm not one that believes in a lot of compromise, so to speak, where somebody, you know, when you compromise, somebody is having to give up what they want, you know, or both parties have to give up. I believe that there's a third alternative where there can be a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I do believe when it comes to road repair, there's a win-win. There's a way to do it where no one is having to give up what they want we just got to work smarter than harder. Uh, Anne Marie, the, the county's industrial park is just basically out of space. Uh, what, what do you think is the county government's role in, uh, in t doing something about that and in attracting business and industry to Nelson County? Well, I think the county's role is, first of all, to look for ways to. Um, you know, provide incentives, like I said earlier, for industry to want to come here. Um, if we're running out of space, then we need to look at other options. You know, um, is there other property in the area or surrounding area where we can um, get involved in? Um, I think that when we offer um, certain incentives or uh, promotional type things, then the industries will want to come here. They'll want to invest. Yes, I think it's our job to help get the word out. We're supposed to be good at communicating what our county has to offer. 
Um, I do think that, uh, you know, if it's property, then we need to help them maybe find that property or we find that property. But once again, I don't feel like um, it comes down to the taxpayers. You know, I, I think we have to work together there. We really have to collaborate with the industry. Right. But um, Nelson County has a lot to offer industry, you know. Right. So I, I really feel like we have a lot. Just are we doing a good job selling ourselves to the others? Right. Well, Anne Marie, the, um, um, the county's population has continued to grow. And uh, our expenses, county expenses, continue to grow at uh, EMS, which is county owned, and also the Nelson County Jail. And uh, the court has been dis discussed as frequently. <coughs> uh, the increasing cost, and, and of course, all of us, you know, homeowners, uh, you know, you've, you've, everybody's costs continue to, to increase. And uh, Judge Executive Dean Watts is, has uh, kind of warned uh, a future uh, fiscal court and magistrates that at some point they may need to, uh, to look at uh, increasing the revenue stream for the county because the county is probably going to continue to subsidize both the EMS and the uh, and the Nelson County Jail. Uh, what um, um, what do you think that um, um, you know? How how what, what's your suggestion for the court moving forward? And are there any particular revenue streams you think uh, uh, that you could support? Nobody wants more taxes, uh -huh. but at some point, you know, there's no new revenue, and and there's little, and and maybe there's no other. Uh, expenses to trim. Uh, uh -huh. Any any thoughts on the, on the, what action you would you could support? Well, both the jail and the EMS services are very very important. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely the county should be there. They should support those. I know that the EMS services is not something we make money off of, or uh, but it's also something that we can't live without. You know, so we have to look at our necessities and how are we going to do this. Um, once again, I really feel like the revenue that's out there without getting in there, you know, I've seen the budget, I've reviewed the budget and all, but without asking some why questions until I get in there as a magistrate, I can't actually answer what is the final answer for the jail and the EMS. But I do feel like that there's revenue out there to be received. You know, I know there's a lot of COVID relief funds mm -hmm. currently coming into the county. Okay, that's additional one or two million dollars of revenue for the county. How is that being used? Are we using that in, um, and are we planning appropriately? Because whether it's EMS today or five years from now, we've got to plan ahead. We've got to be looking at the future for both of those, both the jail and the EMS. And there's always going to be upgrades that need to be employees. We've got to consider the employment, uh, their salaries and how that affects things. And so I really think we need to be taking maybe some of this funding that we're getting now from the COVID relief and <clears throat> using it accordingly. Now, I know with state and federal money, there's usually always restrictions about what you can use it for, how you can use it, or what percentage you can use it for certain things. And so without seeing the fine red tape of that, um, I don't know what that can specifically go for or if there's things that it's limited to, but I feel like that there is ways that we can generate that revenue or it may be that we have to go out and write a grant for some of those funds. You know, and, and the good thing about the grant, sometimes they go two, three years, so they help you get to the next level. Um, sometimes they're for a year, so it really depends. Um, and the other thing is, like I said earlier, when more people move and live and work here in Nelson County, then overall more people are paying taxes, so the revenue is going to go up. So are we offering the right things for people to want to live and work in Nelson County? Right. And that would be a way to offset raising the tax rate. Now, will taxes, you know, can I say they'll never, ever have to be raised? No, there's no way for me to predict that. But I think that we've got to, we've just got to work through some things and be creative about how we're generating that <coughs> revenue. Because we definitely need both of those services. We need the jail and the EMS. The, um, the county owns several uh, a number of pieces of property uh, as well, yeah, like, uh, for example, Dean Watts Park, which uh, 
you know, uh, from its early inception, I don't think anybody ever believed it would be uh, as as popular a place as it as it has become, uh, you know, for for youth sports. Um, but the county also owns the uh, the uh, well the um, the art uh, the former post office slash library on the court square. Uh, let's see, and um, um, the justice center property, uh, the senior citizens. Uh, uh, center and, and um, uh, the uh, a former bu building that was used on West Stephen Foster for state offices. Um, should the county be in the real estate business? Uh, I've, I've had some people suggest that the county should liquidate their real estate holdings, but um, one the uh, the uh, former uh, library building on the Court Square uh, was uh, there was a lot of debate when it was purchased. Uh, the uh, the county, I think, the fiscal court wanted to make sure that building uh, received proper attention and maintenance because it is a, a a very important structure on our court square. But uh, what are your thoughts on on the the current you know uh, holdings of the county as far as real estate? Okay, well, if those properties are something that is vacant and they are not actually being used um, within the community for services to our constituents, um, then no, I, I definitely think they should be liquidated and the funds be put to better use. If they are providing services for our community, like you mentioned, the senior citizens and different things, you know, yes, um, I feel like we're, that is our job, our role as well is to take care of those that live here and provide those services. You know, uh, we can start cutting out all the things we offer in the community for our senior citizens, and we're going to end up where we are with our young people. You know, there's nothing here for them, and that's wrong. You know, there's lots of things that um, all age groups need, and it is the county's job to provide those services. So those lots and those properties that are providing services, um, that is a benefit to our community members, you know, yes, they can continue those. But if they're just vacant, unused, or it's just an office space, then I do feel that liquidating those would be a source of revenue that could be used for something else that maybe is more of a priority in our county. Right. The um, Nelson County Jail is uh, at least 30 years old and uh, in need of uh, upgrades. Uh, some candidates have uh, suggested that it's time to uh, to build a new jail, uh, but of course you're talking millions of dollars for a project like that. However, N Nelson County government has no large uh, uh, outstanding uh, loans due. They uh, um, and and which is to their benefit. Uh, would you uh, would you consider? Um, the, the county uh, investing in a in a new facility uh, the, the county continues to pour money into the existing one just to try to keep the maintenance up uh, uh -huh. what are your thoughts on that well I think we've got to look at all things involved first of all safety is really important so the jail is of strong importance in our county and it needs to be well maintained and we need to have the proper amount of employees and equipment that we need to ensure that so it is our job to support that. If the expenses become more of an ongoing and a rising cost, then the offset of building a new one, and I think that's where we have to really look at what our fund sources are, what fund sources we have that can be used for those things, <laughs> and we've got to weigh it out. You know, when things become more costly to keep the old versus build the new, then we need to cut our costs there. Right. Um, I know it would be a big investment, so um, you know. But because it is a jail, I really feel like there's also other fund sources out there, rather than the taxpayers, right. to build that new facility. But I think until I get in there and actually see what are our expenses, and we weigh those out, and we look, are, is, is this manageable? You know, if the expenses are manageable, then maybe we continue and we do our upgrades. But if it, like I said, becomes more of an expense then I think we need to be looking at ways to generate the revenue or the funding to look into a new building because safety is of the utmost importance. Well, Anne Marie, uh, you're, you're a Republican and we have a lot of Republicans running in, uh, the, uh, in the primary 
uh, this uh, this year, or the, coming up in May. Um, but political party doesn't always mean as much when it comes to local politics. Um, so t tell us, tell our listeners what uh, what's your message to voters about uh, supporting you in the uh, fifth district? Uh, uh, why vote for Anne Marie Williams? Okay. Well, um, first of all, you know, in the primary, I'm talking to those Republicans out there that I need your vote, you know. Um, but to all voters, it is so important that you make your voice heard. And, you know, it's a freedom. It's a right that our ancestors have fought for, for us to get out and vote. And it's one way for us to share our thoughts and our feelings of our values. I'm a very conservative Republican. I believe in the values of the Republican Party, but I also believe that I work for all people. Hmm. If I'm elected magistrate, I'm not just running to help the Republicans in my community. I'm there to help all people. I've said multiple times today, and I'll say it again, everything should be equitable across our county, in our communities, in our homes, in everything that we do, we need to make things equitable for all, regardless of the party line. But I do believe in what the Republican Party stands for, you know, and I am a listener. I have done this all my life. I have always been willing to listen and take the knowledge of others, advice from others, and apply it to what's best. You know, and as an educator, my goal has always been that for every child that walked through the door, that they would grow and they would learn and I could put them on, set them on the path for success. And they would be better and stronger the next day because that was my investment to them. As a magistrate, that's also my goal. I want my District 5 to be better and stronger after my service. I know there's going to be bumps. I know there's going to be setbacks. That's life. I wish it would be merry all the time, but it's not. But we should be constantly in the attitude to want to improve, striving to improve. I'm not okay with just being okay. <laughs> I'm not okay with just being uh, the beautiful small town of Bardstown. I want to be better. I want to be stronger. I want to be a thriving, growing, passionate committee community that meets the needs of all their constituents <coughs> and that we're financially sound to do so. And so I have some great ideas about how we can do that, but I definitely need their vote. But I will listen and I will act accordingly. All right, Bland Marie, we're uh, we're just about down to the wire. We've got to get some some uh, late uh, commercials in before the top of the hour. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, for today's uh, uh, show and uh, talking with Margie and I. Oh well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate uh, all that you all have done to support the community and getting the word out and letting us hear about the different candidates that are out there. That's such a blessing because a lot of people don't have the opportunity to meet one-on-one, -on -one and it's a great way to communicate with others. And I really appreciate your support, and I appreciate so much you all talking with me today. Thank you, Anne-Marie. All right. Th thanks again, Anne-Marie, and uh, we'll be talking to you again soon. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoy this sunny afternoon. All right. Thank you, Anne-Marie. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, Anne-Marie Williams, who is a... Uh, Let's see, a candidate for district. magistrate in the 5th District. Now, Margie, we've got to get some commercials in. We do. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. What's better than a hand-cut loin cooked for breakfast?